Connor, welcome Ooh. to Eighth Lane Endurance Podcast. Thank you so much for having us. Thanks for having me. I guess, yeah, you're in my home, but thanks yeah. for having me on the <laughs> podcast. So for all of our listeners, we're in Park City right now with mm-hmm. Connor. Um, why don't you give us a little introduction to who you are, kind of what's on, what's in store for you this year and yeah. why you're up here in Park City? Yeah, so I'm Connor Rance. Um, ran at BYU, now I run professionally as a track and field and marathon athlete for Nike. Um, I qualified for the Olympics in the marathon just barely so um doing that yeah sorry <laughs> um sorry I'm, this is weird just with all the cameras and everything so, so <laughs> i know it's a to, little to, intense to, like to both all the, the cameras all the viewers i'm sorry <laughs> um but yeah so i i qualified for the olympics in a marathon and then me and my wife had been wanting to try an altitude stint for a while and between my races and her school we're like okay this summer is actually the perfect time so once i qualified for the olympics we decided to move to Park City to try out training at 7,000 feet. It's crazy. Has Have you noticed a difference at all? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. I, I've heard it takes three to four weeks to get the first adjustment. Okay. And then after that, it you know can take up to 90 days to get the full amount. But mm. I don't know. So it when just... you say first adjustment, what are you looking to see after like three to four weeks? So I don't, I don't actually know. It, it <laughs> would just like... be an increase in red blood cells. So I mm. think I would just um workouts would just feel a little easier especially like the i don't know the longer stuff the mm-hmm. longer rate longer races longer workouts um but i don't know it's it's, it's so hard to measure almost similar to like living in utah going to run in california or Florida exactly or something exactly like that. and so like living at park city and working out in provo should have a similar adjustment mm. and so i'm interested to see what happens there but um Having only been here for like about three weeks, mm. we have a while to, I, don't, I have a while to actually see any adjustment. Mm. See what it can do for you. Exactly. and But the one thing that like is going to be hard to really, you know, measure is like I, I started doing workouts um, like the week I moved up here. Uh, so it, it, so it's like, okay, I'm so already going to be. your paces will get faster. Yeah, anyway. my paces are definitely going to get faster, but part of that's going to be because I just started workouts and every week you're just a little bit more fit. Mm. That's so crazy. Yeah. So the reason that I'm so excited to talk to you is Mm. that every YouTube video I've ever seen of you, every training video, like you're pushing, it looks like all gas, no brakes. Like you're pushing as hard as you can, like at the end of an interval, like you're throwing up in one video I saw coughing, spitting, like where does this motivation, where does this drive come from i guess yeah. is kind of where i want to start yeah i think i just um simply it's just wanting to be great i'm mm-hmm. um, wanting to be better than i was yesterday willing to push um and yeah sometimes i mean it might look like i'm spitting or throwing up usually i try and keep everything under control yeah um doesn't help that like this past marathon build i was actually pretty sick um, really? for a few weeks mm. just some wacky bacterial infection and i could run but then anytime I stopped, I was coughing. And yeah. even when I was just sitting at home, I'm like in these coughing fits. And oh, that's awful. It, it, it was kind of rough um, for sure. The build sure. to the trials, the you mean? The build to the trials. Mm, okay. It, it was definitely not my, my <laughs> it was not an ideal build. But yeah. um, happy to come out and still qualify for the Olympics. But it was, I don't know, lots of ups and downs. Mm. That's crazy. But, I don't know. That didn't really answer your question. It was kind of like, wait, like I don't always finish a workout. <laughs> like, wait, I'm not always spitting. throwing up. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Where do you think, like you said it was a desire to be great and to like yeah. be better than you were yesterday. Mm-hmm. Is that something you feel like you grew up with? Cause you've ran cross country track since high school. Is that something right. that you cultivated there? Is that something you grew up with where it, it definitely probably happened like, I shouldn't say definitely probably that doesn't make Mm. any sense um but it was something I think that happened in high school okay um I was a good runner before high school even though I was in I don't know my my journey to running through running has been kind of odd and unique Mm. um but in high school it was pretty good but I would always get beat (laughs) like I I was in the state of Utah at a great time Mm. um my freshman year I I came in and I thought I was pretty good, but I, I missed winning state by a half second in cross country. Oh. 
and it was just the okay now i gotta push that much more to win um state next year and i knew all my my two competitors uh in the state who were like really good cross-country runners they were both juniors my freshman year Mm. i was like they're gonna be pushing just as hard and then the next year i was third they they both beat me by like 10 seconds so it was like okay like I'm, it looks like I'm getting worse, but I'm not. I'm getting better, and then it was just okay. I want to. I want to win a state title, and <laughs> I want to win something. And so throughout high school, I was doing worse compared to the guys in the state, just because the state of Utah as a whole was getting better every year. Mm. But I was also improving. My times were improving, so I don't know. It was kind of like I just wanted to. I don't know. Win something, and it was. I just wanted to win a state title. I kept mm. being, you know, second, third, fourth. Um, I was probably like in the top eight, I don't know, eight times, 10 times as a high oh, scorer, that's but annoying. I didn't win a, I didn't win a rate, didn't win a state title until my junior year. So you could see yourself getting fitter, like with your times and right. But on paper with like each championship race or whatever, right. you weren't quite making right. Like first. the comparison mm. to everybody else, mm. which I mean that there's a lot of lessons there. Like don't compare yourself. Like. You know, it's just about your own journey. Mm. Um, but I don't know. It was fun. I, I enjoyed high school. I enjoyed pushing myself. And I don't know. I also came from a high school program that was very, um, I don't know. We were, we were good. We weren't great, though. Mm. Um, the the coach uh, wasn't, I don't know. He he wanted to be the wrestling coach. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> but he eventually ended up quitting wrestling as, as the guys on the cross-country team started doing well and he's like i'll focus on being the track and cross-country coach so just like whatever sport was doing well he was like oh well, well no no <laughs> Actually, i think he really just wanted to be the wrestling oh, coach okay. but then it was he was thrown into being the track and cross-country okay. coach and so when they started doing well he was like okay maybe i should give these guys a little more attention mm-hmm. and um i don't know it was cool like throughout my time he started like doing more research and how to better coach athletes toward cross-country so like as my high school time went on mm. like we started doing more um like running specific workouts where before it was very like i don't know we do like all right let's do <laughs> you do 20 push-ups here and then you sprint to this station and then you do some mountain climbers and then you sprint to this station no way. and then you do some stairs yeah it was like and that was you training for what the five that, that was my mile? freshman year yeah running okay. high school cross country that's crazy and so it, i mean it, and still you're winning like in I mean, I wasn't winning, but I yeah, was, I was competing. I was close. Yes. And, um, I don't know that we, we were doing a lot of running, mm-hmm. but it was like nothing compared to, you know, a lot of these schools in Utah, like Davis or American Fork that were, mm-hmm. you know, these big running schools. Yeah. Who were doing like really similar workouts to probably what you did at BYU. Oh and, yeah. 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 When I hear about the Davis, um, high school athletes or the American Fork high school athletes, it's like, man, they were. They're pretty much training like college athletes. They, there's a reason they were so successful in high school. Mm. Um, but you know, some of us like who just had normal coaches and went to normal schools where you know it's a teacher that's a coach and they're a teacher first um, out of the two. They're not, you know, I, I don't know how to say it. Like they're great, but they're not these like coaches that are preparing you to be a world class athlete. Mm. They're not so, sport specific. Right. Yeah. Right. And like I, I loved my high school coach. He was a great guy and or he is a great guy. Mm. But there was um I don't know, it was a little frustrating when I'd see these other athletes who run for these other schools go yeah. like American Fork or Davis or I don't know, Park City that were just crushing it. And it was like, I wanna be there eventually. Mm. I think that also speaks something to who you are as an athlete and your psyche because like for a lot of people, myself included, like some things that I've done where it's like, oh, you're almost there, you're almost there, you're almost there. That's like easy to give up. Right. But to like, for that to make you like hungrier almost and for that to yeah. like drive you to want to win speaks to who you are and probably is like a huge right. part of what makes Thanks. you good. But I think, I think, I don't know, the, some people get motivated by failure. Some people get motivated by success. And so- mm-hmm. For me, it was like, I'm so close. Like, what do I need to change? I think had I, you know, won the state championship my freshman year of high school and then won, you know, my sophomore year and those track seasons, I think I would have been a little bit more, I don't know, 
I think I would have been like, sweet, and I would have backed off. But I think the fact that it was, I was so close to a lot of things mm-hmm. kind of was motivating. Like, oh, if I just do, you know, a I'm couple more miles a week. Or if I just run one more interval, just a little harder, um, then I'll get there. And I eventually, you know, I progressed. I got better. And I, I kind of feel like I'm still getting better. I'm still trying to get there. But it's, I don't know, there's always, the better I run, the more I'm like, oh, I'm so close to this next thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And from what I've heard from other people about you is that you push workouts pretty hard. You like to push the pace. You like to like put the work in Mm -hmm. and maybe that like speaks a little bit to your high school career in that like you didn't have any formal training of like, this is what, these are the workouts cross country runners do. You just knew like, I'm just going to work as hard as I can do a few extra miles, push a little harder in this interval. Right. So right. and it's cool. Oh, thank you. And like I, I do push the pace, but I, it's also I don't know. It's not just a me thing. I think there were other guys I was teammates with in college mm. who were very um, motivated in the same way. Mm. Um, another athlete from American Fork. I don't know if mm. you knew Connor McMillan mm. or if that name even sounds it familiar. Like fam- sounds familiar to me. Yeah. He was he was one of my teammates at BYU, and um, when he went pro, he gave up. He he had just graduated in chemical engineering. Mm. And it was like he could have focused on chemical engineering and you know gotten a great job, but he decided he was going to try and run professionally. He went six months without a contract after graduating college, which is a decent amount of time. That's a long time. But um, every workout that we did together, he was very like, I don't want to just be mediocre. Like if I'm sacrificing mm-hmm. this and um, if I'm sacrificing using a degree I worked so hard to get to, I know to get. Mm. Um, I'm going to try and be the best I can be. And so seeing, you know, other athletes have a similar mentality to my mentality of like, I'm almost there. Let's go and hit the next mark. Um, or let's, you know, try and bridge that gap. I think it's kind of, I don't know, it, it was motivating. It was exciting. And Okay. So like, maybe getting into the build of your 2023 build, you kind of had a huge end of 2023 i guess you had chicago and then a couple months later you had the trials i listened to another podcast where you were kind of talking about your mindset going into the build of 2023 Mm -hmm. and i'm sure you had a million things you were kind of working on but the thing you said in that was interesting to me was you wanted to focus on things that you could control in 2023 where did that come from why was it helpful why did you even think of that? Yeah, um, part of it, I mean, I, I work with a sports psychologist who's pretty good and um, just talking Is it the BYU things. guy? It, he was at BYU, now oh, okay. he's with the, uh, the Real, Re, with Real Salt Lake. Cool. Um, but he, I don't know, we kind of talked about taking responsibility. Mm. Um, one thing in the marathon, or for the Olympics was you had to hit the Olympic standard for the united states to get a spot um it made there was a whole complicated system and i really wanted to run the world championships marathon and i had qualified at the fastest time from the year prior i was pretty excited about it i was like i can't wait to put a you know usa singlet on yeah um the issue though was that like no one in the u.s had hit the olympic olympic standard and so there's no guaranteed spots at the trials and so to try and take responsibility, I was like, no, I'll run the Chicago Marathon. Um, the World Championships were in Budapest. Mm. It was going to be really hot. And so I was like, I don't want to risk my, I do a marathon build where I might have to run a marathon that the winner doesn't even run 208.10. And I, I don't even think the winner ran 208.10. In Budapest? In Budapest. And so it was like, I got to figure out what I can do to, you know, not guarantee, but improve my chances of making the Olympic team. And so I decided to run the Chicago Marathon instead. And it worked out, but it was kind of like, okay, I'm going to do what I can to um, make sure I I, I have every chance to make the team. Um, Fortunately, or I don't know, fortunately or unfortunately, Clayton and I were the only ones to run the Olympic standard. And that meant there were only two spots. Had I not, had I gone to the world championships instead, Mm then there would have only been one spot and Clayton and I would have had to compete for it. So that would have been, that would have been tough. That would have been tough. Cause yeah. it's like, now I got to go. 
Um, and and I don't know, maybe if if Clayton and I hadn't trained together, maybe he wouldn't have had the confidence to go run to mm. two oh eight flat. But it was just those uh I don't know, it was just trying to take responsibility. Make sure that I could go and earn a spot. And then if I did earn a spot, I could go earn it again at the Olympic trials. But the goal was just run Chicago, get under two oh eight ten. Um, and then see how the Olympic trials went. We're excited to announce our first podcast sponsor, Creatures of Habit. They have a great overnight oat product called Meal One. There's a ton of different flavors, and each flavor has just about 30 grams of plant-based protein. You put it in the fridge the night before, take it out the morning of, and you have a nice balanced breakfast to fuel you for your workout. If you use our code STORER at creaturesofhabit.com, you get 10% off. And we'd also like to thank our sponsor, Coach Soak. Coach Soak is a brand that focuses on athletes' recovery. Their products have magnesium flakes, mineral-rich sea salts, and essential oils in them that will help aid you in their recovery. These products come in lotions, sprays, and bath salts. If you use code STORER at checkout, that will get you 10% off. Okay, was that uh, kind of focus on doing all that you can do? Was that reflected also in your training or mostly just in race strategy no it was it was in training as well um i mean it's the little things that really add up mm-hmm. when you're at the the level that i'm trying to compete at it's not like there's anybody you know like in high school it was yeah i want to do one more mile or i want to mm-hmm. run one more rep or i want to mm-hmm. do etc like at this level you're you're really struggling to do one more mile like if you do one more mile you might get hurt mm-hmm. and so you or if you go a little bit too fast in a rep, you're going to get injured. So you are doing one more mile. And so it's like, I'm already doing one, every one more I could. Now What it went down to like, okay, what are the little things I can control? Um, okay. And a lot of that was diet and sleep. And um, I don't know, I, I tried sleeping in an altitude tent. That didn't work for me. I wasn't getting high quality sleep. But it was like trying to experiment with a bunch of little things. You know, mm. nothing nothing that made a huge difference. Um but they all made enough of a little difference that it kind of added up. Like another example is I started taking, um, it's one, they're one of my sponsors, but Morton, it's mm-hmm. a, it's a drink company. Um, and I started taking their, their drinks while I was running a lot more in my training. Mm. Now I'd use them in all my previous marathons, but I was like, okay, I want to be so practiced with this and have it so down that it just comes like second nature when I have, like when I'm, I don't know, two miles, three miles in a marathon. It's like, yeah, I, I want to be craving that. And so that was something I'd, I had done to like practice, but it was all little things, I don't know, that added up. So just like pulling in a lot of like, okay, I can do this one little thing and hoping that all those little things added up and would exactly. take you to the level you wanted to be at. Exactly. That's very cool. Um, A phrase that I've heard you and some other BYU guys use a lot too um, in racing and then even in workouts is going to the well. Yeah. Do you want to explain like what that means to you? So going to the well is, you know, when you, I I wish I had a better explanation of this, but when you like tried it so hard or you work so hard that you don't recover for a few days. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, You just, I don't know, you run really, really hard. Mm-hmm. It's something you don't really want to do in workouts. I think I think it's a good thing to do occasionally in workouts because it's a good thing to practice. Because mm. you want to go in a race, it's fine to go to the well. You want to mm. go and dig as deep as you want as you can. Okay, okay. Um, but we'll use it as a like we're not trying to go in the go to the well in this workout. Um, but it's I, I that's that's a funny phrase. Now that you say that, I'm yeah. like, what does it actually mean? I know I've heard a few of you guys use that. And I'm like, I wonder what. Yeah, it yeah. seems kind of similar to like the pain cave yeah. analogy that a lot of people throw around. Right. And and you don't want to uh, overdo any workouts. There's mm. like the right amount of work for every workout is different mm. and it's different for everyone. Mm. I think that some people, um, I don't know, I've had a lot of people, both teammates and competitors be like, oh, you're training, you know, you're training too intensely. You need to you need to ease off on your workouts, but then I'll I'll just know I'm like no, there's other people that are working harder than I am in workouts mm. who are beating me, mm. um, and that's I don't know I want to I want to bridge that gap, mm. um, but when I, I I don't but it's a balance yeah it's a balance I'm tripping over my words trying to explain it 
you don't want to go to the well every workout. You don't want to be struggling to recover, but you want to hit that, I don't know, the optimized amount of hard work and recovery so that you can come back. I don't know if you do a workout Tuesday, you want to be, you don't want to go too hard that you can't work out Thursday. And then Thursday, you don't want to go too hard that Saturday comes along and you can't do your long run Mm. or have a quality long run. Mm. So you're kind of using that go to the well pretty strategically. Yeah. Maybe like a couple times a year, it sounds like. Yeah. For I, in workouts a few times a year. Okay. And in races, you try Always. and do it all the time. You okay. wanna I mean you wanna fin- if Coach Iastone kinda said this when I was um a, a new pro, but he's like, You're not gonna travel to this if you don't think you can you can compete. Mm. It's like we're not gonna have you travel halfway across the country to show up to a race and be undercooked or mm. Um, overcooked you want to show up and be ready to race and so I think anytime you step on that starting line you want to give it your all Mm. and what does giving it your all look like to you like I think after the trials there was an interview where you said that like you were hurting during the trials and you chose different people in your life to run miles for and the last mile you ran for your wife is that a strategy you use a lot or yeah, what does giving your all look like? Right, so I feel like those are a couple different questions. So I'll, I'll talk about giving your all yeah, first. Yeah. Um, giving it your all, I think, means, you know, you finished that competition, hands on your knees. You gave everything you could to either place the highest you could or to run the fastest you could, whether that's you even split it to run as fast as you could and you, I don't know, you finished as tired as could be or you ran the race as, I don't know, as objectively fast and like better than everybody else that you could, how, however you would place the highest. Whatever your strategy is, you just okay. like follow it yeah. too. You executed your strategy. Mm. Okay. Um, but I think like, well, let me let me come back. Um, then to your next question of you know running for other people, that was something that I really, I don't know, I tried to work on a few things like psychologically working with a sports psychologist before the Olympic trials and I I fell short in some areas and I did well in other areas and one of those was with my sports psychologist we had talked about um we talked about being grateful grateful to compete Mm -hmm. um my build for the Olympic trials wasn't wasn't good it was probably my worst marathon build um yeah there was just so much that kind of happened during that build that he's like look a lot of people have sacrificed for you to be there Mm. Um, and he's like, you should find a way to express gratitude or, you know, be grateful in your heart for all the people that have helped. And we had, we had talked about, you know, writing down names, whether on my phone or in a notepad or just, you know, in my mind of like this mile is for someone. Mm. And so I was just like, okay, I'll have 26 miles. And, um, I planned to do that. The trials that weekend actually ended up being very exhausting. There was a lot more press interviews that kind of came up like during my time there um a lot of things i probably should have said no to uh, for competition sake Mm. but i remembered it during the race and i was like okay like when when the race started to get hard around mile 12 13 and it was like okay like i'm doing this mile for my brother and my sister and my mom my dad and my in-laws that came and then i saw um there's a part point on the course about 18 and a half, 19 miles in. I saw a few of my college teammates. I'm like, all right, this mile is for these guys. Mm-hmm. Um, but then the last mile, I was like, okay, that last mile is going to be for my wife. And I was just like, I got to save that. Like, this one is for mm-hmm. Kylie. And I don't know. It, it just helped kind of get those miles along and helped it. So I was like, okay, like everyone has sacrificed for me to live this dream. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was just grateful for all of them. And probably like remembering their sacrifice too, like kind of lights a fire of oh, like, yeah. okay, like I can do this or they believe in me. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I, I know my wife's not going to, she's not going to be mad at me or, or, yeah. or change how much she loves me no matter how I do. And same with my, you know, my family members and my friends who came out to watch the race. But it just in a way like it's like, yeah, you know what? She believes in me because... You know, she's helping me to get sleep. She's helping me out with getting nutrition. Um, she's kind of letting her life sort of revolve around my goals. Mm-hmm. And not not completely revolve around it, but she's making decisions that help 
benefit me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think about like my parents going to races and helping me get to these higher level competitions when I was a sophomore, junior, and senior in high school. And so it was just like a a con um, a lot of things that contributed to me being successful. And so thinking about that during a race, yeah, definitely lights a fire and motivates you. Yeah. And sometimes too, like, I don't know if you experience this at all, but like, I think it's easy to like doubt yourself when you're hurting, like doubt if you can do it. So like to be able to remember your family, like cheering your name at cross country events or your wife staying up late to help you train or whatever probably is like a huge confidence boost of like okay they believe in me i believe in me too kind of thing i don't know 100 Mm. percent. just if somebody else believes you can do it especially like those close to you it's so comforting Mm. and so it's just nice having them there yeah nice to see people out on the course and i don't know be in that competition but no i have a huge support group Mm. what are some of the doubts that come to your mind more frequently than others while you're in the pain cave or going to the well in a race i think like the doubt is how long can i hold this pace or Mm. um and i maybe i i watch too many other athletes but a lot of athletes when they like hit the wall Mm. they just look like they're like just barely jogging and i Mm. i don't really have i haven't had i haven't had that experience very much Mm um only one time that i can think of off the top of my head but it's always like what if i black out what if i don't finish what if i don't know like most races it's fine but the olympic trials was kind of a tougher one for me because it was i don't know i didn't want to have to wait another four years to make the olympic team um and so that was something that was kind of coming in my mind like if i don't make it now like is it really ever going to happen like Mm. I don't know. And they did that weird thing where there was only two slots. And so right. you had to like, even though you unlocked the spot, you had to I had to go and win. For it. Yeah. It's so right. annoying. Um, Yeah. That's another thing I wanted to ask you about. Like when those doubts come in, when you're pushing so hard, like what helps you combat that? Okay. What if I push too hard? What if I push this injury too much? What helps you like almost put those aside and I- still push? I think, you know, if it's an injury, I I go back and forth. That Those ones yeah. are very specific. But yeah. I think for like a race, when I'm really like, this is tough, I make little goals. Like inner, inter, I don't know, intermediate goals. Mm-hmm. Like, so like if my goal is to win a race or um, I change it to top three. And if it's top three is out of... Um, out of touch, like top five. And so it's like, I have to just adjust just my goals it's just how I'm running um but if I and sometimes like I don't know I ran the boulder boulder last year and I thought I was in fourth place the a group of three had broken away and I was like okay like my my goal was top three until those three broke away and then it was I want to be fourth I don't want anyone to catch me mm. and then I see one of those athletes fade about a mile and a half two miles later and so I catch him like sweet I've got my goal of top three I'm already hurting pretty bad but then I see second coming closer. It's like, I can catch second. And then when I pass second, I'm like, oh, first is coming back too. I could win. And, you know, it it was a really painful race. I'm a little nervous for it next weekend because I'm like, that, I, I think back to that race and I was like, that was so painful. I don't want to go through that again. Your body's but, like cramping up. Yeah, it's exactly. Like, Please stop. It's <laughs> but, but it's those little races that like you just... I don't know, those little wins that you have mid race of like, oh, okay, like I'm I'm good. I'm gonna be top three. That are like, okay, like I can push a little bit more. Um, sometimes it's thinking back to training. Mm-hmm. Okay, when when I really struggled in a training session, how did I overcome that? Or previous races when I struggled in a race. I don't know, I feel like a lot of the races I've won, I've struggled in them. Um, I've had a lot of doubts come. But then by the end of the race, I win, and I'm like, oh, I don't know how I just did that. And so just kind of, I don't know, letting that, I don't know, stack on top. Those little things stack on top of each other and give me some confidence. Mm. So like staying present and just looking toward whatever the next goal is for you Uh, in the race. Yeah. However small. Staying where my feet are. Staying where your feet are. Is that like a mantra that you, do you use mantras often? No, not really. No, not really. 
But I've heard someone say that, and I like it. Mm. So I, I've quoted it a lot over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I like that too. It's very interesting. Um, so coming out of the Olympic trials, you had a little bit of an injury. You got a little bit of an injury. Yeah, I, I had a little in- muscle injury. Okay. It just didn't make any sense. The mm. doctor was like, this doesn't make any sense. And I was just like, yeah, I've... I don't know. I, I was trying to figure it out, like how it could have happened. Um, but the more I talked to people, what we kind of, you know, set up, set on how I got hurt was I just took a really strong break after the Olympic trials. Usually after a race, I'll, I'll just kind of keep training. Mm. Um, even after my marathons, I'll like take a few days where I hike instead of run. Mm. But then I'll get to training pretty quick. And the end after the Olympic trials, I was like, okay, I've had you know, a hard track season, or I had the Boston Marathon, then a hard track season, then the Chicago Marathon, then the Olympic Trials, I need a break. Mm. I just need to make sure my body's all recovered because that's what everybody says you're supposed to do after a marathon. Mm. Um, But I, but it was like snowing outside, so I didn't go on any hikes. It was freezing. It was just like, it was miserable weather that next, that next week. So I just spent a lot of time inside and I think not moving, um, didn't do me any favors it's like shocked her yeah so the moment i started running again it Mm -hmm. was like the body was not ready for it and i started doing and i think i did like one or two workouts Mm -hmm. and i was like okay like i want to i want to set some big goals i had some goals in the back of my mind and races i had kind of pinpointed like this is where i'm gonna um go for some big wins or or compete with some of the best in the world and it didn't work out because i I don't know, I got a little too excited. Mm. And I think going from completely no no exercise for a week to getting really excited just ended up um, leading to a muscle injury. Oh, it's so annoying. <laughs> it, it, it is annoying, but it's something, I don't know, every athlete has to learn, you mm. know, how to recover from injury and how to go through it and how to make, I don't know, not make those same mistakes again. Yeah. And, I mean, it seems like you dealt with it really well. What did you... Do, did you stop running? Did you ease back on the running? A lot of cross training, I'm assuming. A lot of t- a lot of time in the swimming pool. Swimming pool. Yeah, I couldn't I couldn't run. I couldn't bike. It was it was, it was a muscle injury, so mm-hmm. I like I couldn't really use. It's in one of my mm-hmm. legs, and I couldn't. I'm not going to go into too much detail about what it was, but it yeah. was like I couldn't do much exercise that that had anything to do with my legs. So I had to put in a a little like floaty thing in between my legs, and then mm-hmm. just. I don't know, swim with my arms and I don't know, I don't know, it kind of had to, had to change my mindset of like, let's get fast too. Let's just stay fit, you know? And after a couple of weeks, I mean, you're back to like fully training now right. and the injury's good. The injury's it sounds good. like, yeah. Um, it was really frustrating. It was really painful, but it was like, it was such a short amount of time. And I think that's how a lot of injuries have been to me. I've um, you know, knock on wood, I've never had to be out more than eight weeks for, from a bone injury or a muscle injury. Um, but it, but it was a pretty painful. So the cross know, training six weeks lent you well. It sounds like yeah, I I think so. I think um, it was miserable going through it, but like I had to set kind of like I talked about with races. I had to set these intermediate goals of like, okay, my goal today is I don't know how far can I swim? Can I hit ten thousand yards? So that was, that was one of my goals for a day. And I and I hit it and I was pretty pumped because I was like, okay, like for somebody that doesn't swim unless they're hurt and I haven't haven't really been hurt that often, um, 10,000 yards is a lot. It's a long it took time, me, yeah. <laughs> took me over two hours. Like, oh, it probably took me over two and a half hours. Yeah, it's a long time it to was, be it in a pool. It was a long pool. time to be in a pool. Um, it's very different from running too. Like you're not chatting with your training partners. No. You don't have any type of music or podcast. I don't even know if you do that no. at all while you're running. N- not unless I'm on a treadmill, but swimming in a swimming pool feels like you're on a treadmill. You yes. Know? It's Just, so like blocked in. And, right. Yeah. And so it was pretty miserable, but it was like, it's okay. Like I'm just, just getting my workout in and I don't know if I, if I stopped to take a break some days, it would just be like, it would take me like five minutes to start again. <laughs> So I, I just tried to avoid any breaks whatsoever. <laughs> You're like, I can't stop. And yeah. then you come out of it super fit now. I, I was fit enough. Mm. Not not super fit. I still have mm. a ways to go, but 
Um, fortunately, I have like at least, I don't know, 12, 13 weeks. Yeah. So with this marathon build to Paris, mm-hmm. um, first of all, do you have some type of kind of like you did in 2023, some type of mental goal that you're like, this is what I'm focusing on for the build to Paris? I, I think that I'm, I'm changing a few things, not okay. a lot. Mm. So like, again, living up at 7,000 feet is one of the few things I'm changing. Mm. Um, I'm trying to run more hills because the course is pretty hilly. But I'm not going to change anything too drastic for my, my training for the Chicago Marathon or the Olympic Trials. Mm-hmm. Just don't really want to risk it. So I don't have like this this mantra of, you know, keep it, control what I can control. Mm-hmm. Because I'm, I've kind of, I don't know, I've hit that spot where it's like, okay, I'm already in the race. Now it's I've okay. controlled it. I've, I've controlled <laughs> yes. that. Like, um, I'm, I've taken responsibility for that. Okay, now let's let's go out and maybe take a few risks in training. Let's maybe push a little harder. Mm. Um, let's do a little more hills. Let's do a little more on like I don't know, dirt runs. I guess doing more on dirt, which I guess is a better thing for injuries, but it's a lot harder. It kind of wears you out more. So I think doing these i don't know these little little changes is gonna hopefully help me you know progress to a a higher level and keep keep me healthy but so kind of time will tell there yeah it sounds like it goes back to the mindset that you may have developed in high school or just through your collegiate career of like go a little farther do a little bit more yeah i think every year um especially with i mean i mean i'm young for a marathoner Mm uh but every year it's like you want to build on a, on something one of my teammates in college was um his name's rory linkletter he actually qualified for the olympic team for canada which is cool. pretty cool yeah that's very um, cool um and he was always like every year i'm either going to run my workouts faster or i'm going to run more mileage or i'm going to run farther in my workouts it's like i just need to build one thing every year Mm. or one thing every season so I kind of have to look at it like that okay what am I doing different this year like than last year what am I going to do to improve even if it's just you know these minute improvements they're going to add up at a marathon Mm. and that's what's like so insane about marathon to me is that it's a sport that your fitness builds year after year after year after year like into your 30s it's almost like a a wise man's sport i guess it is it is it can kind of i mean it can kind of be an old man's sport when you look at like Elliot and ken and say it's just these guys are they've they've been running a long time and they they understand running Mm -hmm. to to a level that i have years and years to to figure out but i mean those are the guys i have to compete against so i i need a I don't know, maybe learn a little bit more, but yeah. Yeah, I think that's really cool. Um, so in this build to the marathon, you have a couple of races. You're going to one next week, right? Mm-hmm. So Boulder Boulder, a ten K. Yep. What is the purpose of a ten K like this in your marathon build? Like what are you hoping to get out of it? So the the main thing um is trying to get used to racing. I think there's a like you know when we and I talked with you about going to the well Mm. it's you don't want to do that too much in training especially early in training so I want to practice that I want to practice you know working as hard as I can mid-race so that's one of the reasons I'm doing boulder boulder the other is the race day atmosphere can Mm -hmm. totally be can throw you off Um, I felt like that was one thing I really wanted to work on prior to the Olympic trials but I had an injury before the Olympic trial, so I was only able to race once. And even then, I was injured before that race. Mm. And it was something that was really tough for me because I was, I wasn't, I don't know, I, I didn't have enough times to practice getting nervous before a race. That when the Olympic trials came, I was overly nervous. And so this is one of those things I'm like, okay, how can I work on being nervous for a race, combating that nervousness, going out and competing, kind of keeping everything I don't know keeping a good normal mindset so a little bit of just like <clears throat> exposure to the pre-race nerves and right. then also giving yourself an opportunity to race right is there anything you're going to do with this data like your time on the 10k like will that reflect in your training like in your training times or 
everything no, will I, stay the same. Everything will stay the same. I think okay. if I mean if I go and crush it, I'll I'll have a little bit more confidence. Mm. But it's like if I if I do or don't, the goal is still like I'm doing a lot of or the goal is still the Olympics. It's mm. and I'm not gonna go and be like, okay, I ran twenty eight forty at <laughs> yeah. the Boulder Boulder. That means <laughs> I need to run eight miles eight miles at marathon pace at four forty eight now instead of four fifty or mm. vice versa. It's I don't know, in the marathon you're there's so much going on. So you're keeping those workouts that you and your coach have already planned. Right. Or he's planned and I'll, plan- yeah. I'll hear about it. <laughs> you're <him>. doing <laughs> Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. And I, I like not I don't like to think too much about you know, what I've done in the past and how that's going to affect my next workout. Yeah. Um, if coach says like five flat or 450 or 455, to me, it's still all a relative effort. It's going to be mm-hmm. hard to like exactly split that unless I'm looking at my watch, you know. Yeah. So five or 10 times in the middle of a rep. So when he says like 450 versus like 445, mm-hmm. you know that basically saying 445 is just like a little bit harder of an effort. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you know, some days if the weather's good, I'm going to run faster than what coach says. If the weather's bad, I'm probably going to run a little slower. But I know, I, like, it's just that relative effort of when I hear what he says, I'm like, okay, like, that sounds good and, and go with it. And I think sometimes um, you can get too, like, precise with things and then realize, you know, there's there's a million factors out there that could really change it. So just going off the feel of what coach says. Mm. That's very interesting. Um, another question before your debut marathon, I think it was 2021, right? 2022. 2022. Okay. I saw that you did win, uh, 20 K 20 K champs. Yes. Will you run a 20 K or will you run more races before Paris? Or are you going to try to hold back a little bit before the Olympics? There was a few I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Um, that little muscle injury kind of, uh, kind of killed my, uh, killed my chances i don't know i won't run a 20k maybe a half marathon okay um but I, I i don't know i'd have to look at the schedule like our my agent has like a list of like all these races throughout the okay. world so um but i'll run the 10k at boulder boulder and then i'll run the u.s olympic trials in the 10,000 meter on oh the wow track. um i have to be out there for team processing anyway so i'm like mm. might as well run this race might i'm already out it. here like so I'm you qualified for it. You ran the uh, ten thousand meter Olympic trials in twenty twenty, right? Yeah. And I saw you ran. You placed fifth and eighth. I don't remember which events. I, they I was were. fifth in the ten thousand, eighth in okay. the five thousand. Fifth is like oh, so close again. Yeah. It it was frustrating because like mm-hmm. I I got shoved with about a hundred to go, and I wasn't catching the top three. Yeah. But I was catching the guy in fourth, and it like that would I, have been I almost ultimate. went down. Oh. Um, but I got up and I was able to like, I don't know, pass the sixth and seventh guy. Um, but like, it, it was pretty devastating. Like I, I wasn't that, like I was five seconds off a third. Mm. So I was, I wasn't close to actually making the team. Like mm. it, five seconds okay. sounds close, but especially in the 10,000, 10, especially in, well, in the 10,000, five seconds is close, but it was all like, they put those five sec they put four of those five seconds on me in the last like quarter mile oh okay so it it was just i didn't have that sprint finish the Mm. race just wasn't good for a a runner like me and those athletes were definitely i mean looking back you can tell those athletes were just on a different level Mm. but at the time it was like dang it (laughs) you know it was so close like what could i have done differently um and so i i don't know that that race was a little tough because i'd run it was my fourth 10k i'd done in 36 days Oh, whoa. And so it was a lot of racing. Mm. And I was just, I think I was just tired. But then I was like, I was also fifth. So there's a little part of me that was like, maybe I could have made the team, you know? Yeah. So in, are you competing in the 10,000 meter trials Mm -hmm. in an attempt to qualify for the team? That, that's not my primary goal. Okay. I mean, it'd be cool. Yeah. Um, they, they, there's two ways to qualify and it's through either world rankings or, uh, you have to be top three who mm-hmm. has either the world ranking spot or the Olympic standard. Mm-hmm. And I don't have the Olympic standard and my world ranking isn't isn't great. Um, they started taking cross-country competitions and counting them toward world ranking for the 10,000. 
okay. um but a lot of that has to do with these cross-country races that are in europe it's not like u.s cross-country races can really help you that much so what um, is what is the difference there why would a europe race help you more than a i i don't really understand it <laughs> like <laughs> i mean i think it's they just they invite like there's more countries that participate okay it's an arbitrary system i don't think it's that great okay um, so I'm going to the 10,000 at the U.S. Olympic Trials just to compete and kind of get that more, I don't know, that high energy race in. Mm. Um, I just, I don't know, I feel like that's something I can, I, I've struggled with in the past. So I want to get a race where I'm, you know, there's a lot of high energy. I have to be there for team processing anyway, so that's like, I might as well go. Might as well. And then, but it's like, I don't want to fly out to a different race, you know, a weekend later. Yeah. If I'm, not, if I'm already going to have to go to Eugene, might as well go and race. Mm. and get that high energy race in um if i end up top three and run under 27 like I mean, those chances are pretty pretty low mm. but i mean then i'd consider you know competing in the 10,000. but the main goal for me right now is to compete in the marathon and and do as well as i can there mm. um so i'm not really too worried about so the it's 10, more 000. it's more out of convenience and like I want yes. more race experience before Paris. That's exactly okay. it. So it seems like you might take like those almost wins pretty hard. Mm -hmm. How do you bounce back after an almost win like you had in high school or in the Olympic trials in 2021? I think part of it is I really enjoy training. And if I'm like really struggling after a race like that, that'll stay with me for a little bit but if once i get back into training i get really excited about the next race and so it's it's easy to really be like down on yourself when you're not training mm -hmm. but the moment you start like looking forward to okay how can i improve next time things get exciting again so almost the little wins of training keep you motivated yeah like the the enjoyment of staying of of training like being in the moment and i don't know if i'm on like a an 18 mile long run and it and I'm just there with some of the guys I train with, like, and I'm enjoying that. I'm not worried about, I'm not thinking like, oh, I really wish I would have made the Olympic team. It's, I'm enjoying that moment. And so sometimes that's, that's where I need to be um, mentally after like a race where it didn't go well. It's just get back to training, get back to something that's I'm used to. Um, that sounds like it's almost a subconscious reaction of like, okay, I'm really disappointed about this, but naturally i'm just more excited about training now yeah. or is it something that you consciously have to be like okay i'm pulling myself to the present i'm pulling myself to training i i think sometimes it's a little conscious but a lot of the time it is subconscious because it's i don't know it's just fun training like i'll i'll, I'll train every day i love it mm -hmm. I'll, I'll race any day I, I love it but it's nice when um you know after a bad a bad race or a bad competition i can go and be like okay i Let's just go and go out for a good run and, and prepare for the next thing. How does marathon training compare to the other training distances that you've done? I think like, do you enjoy it more? Is it harder? It, it's definitely a different type of hard. Okay. Um, like a lot of workouts start pretty easy when you're doing marathon training. When you're doing track training, you know, or or cross country training it's like that first repeat whether you're on the grass or the track if you're doing intervals or that first mile of like a short tempo it's brutal the moment you're doing like marathon specific stuff you're like oh if i run 4 30 like this is fast as i need to go like at like the or i should rephrase that 440s even the fastest you need to go in a lot of your marathon training but like if i'm doing two mile intervals for a marathon my first I don't know, my first interval feels pretty easy. And that second interval feels pretty easy. And then it gets a little hard. But it's a different type of hurt as compared to like when I'm training for the 5K and I'm doing mile repeats on the track and it's like, okay, I got to hit 64s or 65s mm. per lap and those just exhaust me. So it is still difficult, but it's like a moderate kind of difficult? Yeah. Okay. It, it, it's difficult at the end of the workout. Like you... Those early parts of the workout, like especially our eight, ten, or you know, thirteen mile marathon pace workouts, it's like you start those out, and it's not really difficult until maybe mile three or four, and even then, it's not 
it's not oh, let me rephrase that it's not difficult until mile three or four and it's not that difficult even until you're i don't know till mile like seven or so mm. so until towards the end that's when you start like kind of hurting feeling the right okay Wh- which is what you want in the mm. marathon workouts but it it's just very different while in track i feel like every workout was just brutal especially like anytime we did any workouts on the grass and cross country it was you start that workout and you're tired by the you know three minutes in or you know less Mm. and then it's like all right let's just keep doing this as long as we need to do you feel like your mindset lends itself to this marathon training of like okay hold back now because i know it's gonna hurt later or do you feel like you had to learn that mindset it's definitely a mindset i've had to learn learn i I really like just pushing the pace and i'm like i feel great i feel like i could do this for an hour or two hours Mm. but then you get to especially in the marathon you get to mile 18 and it's a whole different ball game Mm. um you can feel i don't know i feel like i could run you know yeah if, if i'm completely peaked my training's gone perfect i think i could run pretty close to like world record marathon pace given i haven't even done that for a half yet so maybe yeah. i'm maybe i'm talking out of my butt but like <laughs> um i feel like i could hold that for close to 18 miles but the moment that comes mm. i'm gonna be running seven minute miles the rest of the way <laughs> like i'm gonna slow down so much so it's the adjustment of i don't know that being patient like i could i could hold a lot of different paces i feel like for 18 miles and feel good but the marathon those last like those last eight miles really just feels like a completely different i don't know completely different sport in a way so is that like are those eight miles like looming and that's what's making you kind of be patient in the beginning Mm -hmm. 18 or is it just like okay i'm looking at my watch i know what my pace is i know what like theoretically i should be at so i'm just gonna like stick to this yeah i think I think it's like I had one bad experience at Boston. I went out really hard. Mm. Um, was that 23 Boston? It was or? 23 okay. Boston. And I, I I don't know. I don't know if I was in the fittest shape I'd ever been up to that point. Well, or a fittest shape I've ever been. I just remember workouts were clicking. I was feeling really good right before the, right before the race. Mm. I was like, this is like, I got to that marathon and I just felt amazing. And I remember through 15 miles feeling so good and being like, I think I could win it today. And then mile 16, the real contenders went out and dropped a 423 mile. And I, (laughs) you're like, I couldn't, I couldn't run that. uh, Um, I probably could have ran that mile, but I I don't know if I would have finished. And I just remember every mile after that just got a little bit harder till I was at 24. And then my vision started to go very fuzzy and had tunnel vision. And then there was a little bit while where everything just kind of went black and i was able and you to were like, still running i was still running well it's black i went really i started i was running really slow and then as i i kept slowing down until my vision came back and then when it came back um and th- i kept having tunnel vision come in and out when it came back i was like oh I, I would speed gosh. up and then when it would go i'd slow down so i was like i just need to finish and people are like flying past me as if i'm you're like i can't even see who's going past me yeah (laughs) that's insane what causes tunnel vision like that just your effort at the beginning or yeah i think i was just pacing poorly and i i under fueled it was i mean there's a variety of things Mm -hmm. so having that experience is like okay let's let's pace it well like from now on just because i don't i don't want to go out and do that again and you Mm -hmm. know you train for a marathon you know 14 16 weeks and then it's like after the marathon, it's like, well, now you have to recover for two weeks or three weeks. So no more races for a minute. And it, I don't know. I love racing so much that I don't want to uh, miss that or mess up that effort and mm-hmm. miss another experience. Yeah, that's it's crazy because marathon, like so many things can go wrong. You yeah. can show up at the start line and you can be the fittest you've ever been. But then if a fueling thing goes wrong or you miss your bottle, like I think you missed your bottle in the I trials, did. right? Yeah. Like something as small as that can like totally affect the last eight miles of the race. Exactly. So it's not always about your fitness. Sometimes it's about like your strategy, your mental game. Right. And yeah, I mean, that's obviously what makes you 
the best marathoner in the U.S. right now is yeah. that you focus on all those little things in your day to day, kind of like you were saying. Yeah, it's it's easier when you, I don't know, you you find the little details and you work on them. Mm-hmm. Um, the execution of a marathon is difficult because you do feel so good, and you can feel so good for eighteen miles, and if you run those 18 miles too fast you're not gonna you're gonna feel terrible for the last eight um just to be respectful of your time one last question uh there are a lot of people in the united states right now whose dream is to go to the olympics and that's a dream that like only a select few can ever experience so to those kids right now that are thinking like, oh, I want to be in the Olympics one day. Or to anyone who's trying to achieve like a lofty goal like that, what have you learned from training for the marathon that you would give to them as advice? Yeah, it'll sound pretty cliche, um, but just enjoy the journey. I, th- I think like what has made me a really good athlete is that I look forward to every run. And well, maybe not every run, but I, I look forward to 90% of runs. And I enjoy those runs. I enjoy, you know, whether it's with friends or whether I'm alone. Um, I joke with my wife that the days I really don't want to run, those are the days I actually have to go to work. So 10% of the, (laughs) about 10% of the time, I actually feel like I'm working. And then Mm -hmm. 90% of the time, I'm just having fun. And so, you know, these lofty goals that kind of, I don't know, lead us to these great places where we get to, I don't know, make great relationships with people and we get to, um, I don't want to test our own limits. So I, I recommend to anybody, you know, have dreams, have lofty goals, go for them and see how you can do. Because if you don't, you, I don't know, you miss the whole journey. I like that. I think that's a oh, perfect thanks. note to end on. <laughs> thank you so much for having us. And thank you for like all of the insights on Marathon. Oh, thank you. <laughs>